Pramit Pral Chaudhary, weigh in on this uh, emperor mindset commentary that we are seeing, that Xi now sees himself as emperor of China, wants to be treated as emperor of uh, what he considers is now a genuine true global superpower and therefore will come to BRICS where he thinks he can be lord and master but will not come to G20 where he's important but not first amongst equals. Well, I think what we are definitely seeing with China is an attempt to create a alternate international order, if you wish. So it's very clear, I think, from what India and China in their clashes, for example, within the BRICS, uh, with Brazil and India on one side and Russia and China on the other, and usually South Africa decided to defect to the Russian camp and the Chinese camp in this last BRICS, where China has basically said we want to convert the BRICS into a G7, a non-Western G7 grouping, but with a very clear anti-Western uh, rhetoric inside it, um, within it. It's already trying to do that within the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, where India is a, is a re re reasonably minor player. Um, and obviously, it's facing some resistance. I think India, in many ways, is probably the most uh, strongly resistant among the emerging economies to this idea, though Brazil not far behind. In the G20, you have a situation where, if you look at it, roughly 10 members are anti-Chinese or anti-Russian, especially over the Ukraine issue. Uh, the other eight, uh, uh, another eight are trying to leverage the differences between Russia and China and the other 10 to get something for themselves. So for, for Xi, I think it looks at it and he says, this is not an organization that, well, yes, I'll be a member of it, and I will try to ensure that it doesn't uh, affect Chinese interests too much, but it's not an, in, an, or, an organization I wish to invest too much in. The question okay. I think for him will be what type of an alternative to G20 would China have in mind over time? But I think it's right now it doesn't have an idea, but it will in, in, at some point. Sujan Chinoy, how should the success of the G20 be judged? For those watching, given the very clear fact that there are tensions amongst these countries over the Russia-Ukraine war, there is lack of consensus on that. So keeping that aside, when you look at the outcome document, uh, give your sense to our viewers about how the success of the G20 should be judged. Look, uh, if I were to put on my hat as the Think20 chair for India's G20 presidency, let me tell you straight away that there is a lot more consensus out there uh, among the academicians, among the experts, uh, among uh, the uh, civil society organizations than there may be uh, at the level of governments. And mind you, all these global challenges that we are speaking of, uh, whether it's fo food, fuel, fertilizer, finance, uh, these are not going to be tackled, uh, nor is climate change going to be tackled simply by governments. You require the people of the world, the experts around the world uh, to collaborate. And we have seen in the Think 20 much greater consensus. So I'm very hopeful. Uh, I wouldn't judge the G20 presidency simply on the basis of a an outcome document or a couple of paragraphs there. As I said at the beginning, it's a year long effort. India succeeded in putting a, a spotlight on key right. issues. And that's what counts. That's the legacy that we're going to hand over to the next presidency. But may I just chip in here with a couple of other important points. You see, it's also in the interest of the United States, especially when President Biden flies all the way to New Delhi to ensure that there will be some kind of consensus. So I see uh, President Biden also doing a little bit of heavy lifting uh, during his presence here to ensure a successful outcome. It's not in the U.S. interest to see that India's G20 presidency is maligned by those that doubt its success. Number two, uh, the fact that the Chinese premier will be here is not to be underestimated. Before Prime Minister Modi took over as the Prime Minister of India, mind you, the Chinese always engaged the Prime Minister of India at the level of the premier, not at the level of the president. It's only Mr. Modi who has been engaged at the level of the president. And the third point I'd like to make is that it's not in China's interest to see uh, the G20 fail completely, because sooner or later, as is uh, want with these musical chairs, it's going to come around to China's you know, turn as well. And China's, it, it's not in China's character to abandon any global space or any major framework. The G20 is far too important to China, and it will become even more important with the induction of the African Union. So mind you, China is not going to walk away from the G20. And I think we are also highly overrating uh, 
uh, the chances of the BRICS emerging as some kind of great alternative to the G20. Look, India is in the BRICS. So not as an alternative to the G20. The question is, can it be, an can it be a Chinese alternative to the G7? No, it cannot. Because if you look at the economies there, especially the new ones that have come in, and take just Ethiopia, for example, uh, it's not uh, going to be like the G20. Moreover, India is a member. India is not going to play ball with uh, those that are seeking to, to have a contestation through the BRICS uh, or, or make the BRICS uh, a China-led organization. India will not permit that. So no, we have to keep in mind that China will ride the old order because the old order benefits China. That's precisely what has given China a ch chance to rise to where it is. It is also creating parallel structures where it can, in their own likeness, uh, you know, have some advancement of their goals and objectives. But okay. I don't see the BRICS as uh, a formidable uh, institution that will take on the work of the G20. It cannot. India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics. Koi dud ke se dula hua nahi hai. Unmatched eye, unmatched experience. The world has changed. My black hair has become grey as well. And with unmatched passion for the story. Do not monopolize the conversation. When it's 100% news that matters, it's News Today with Rajdeep Sardesai. Monday to Friday, 9pm. Only on India Today TV. India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics Koi dood ke se dula hua nahi hai. unmatched eye unmatched experience the world has changed my black hair has become gray as well and with unmatched passion for the story do not monopolize the conversation when it's hundred percent news that matters it's news today with Rajdeep Sardesai Monday to Friday 9 p.m. only on India Today TV India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics Koi dood ke se dula hua nahi hai. unmatched eye unmatched experience the world has changed my black hair has become gray as well and with unmatched passion for the story do not monopolize the conversation when it's hundred percent news that matters it's news today with Rajdeep Sardesai Monday to Friday 9 p.m. only on India Today TV India's number one political reporter defines what seems to be happening vendetta politics Koi dood ke se dula hua nahi hai. unmatched eye unmatched experience the world has changed my black hair has become gray as well and with unmatched passion for the story do not monopolize the conversation when it's hundred percent news that matters it's news today with Rajdeep Sardesai Monday to Friday 9 p.m. only on India Today TV